My name is Alex Dorgen. I'm an Ansible solution specialist, and today I'm going to be talking about how Ansible can be used to help with some of your Red Hat satellite management and different pieces that I can automate within it. So why would I want to automate Red Hat satellite? Well, just like anything else, there's a management aspect to trying to keep up with some of the things going on within satellite. Obviously, satellite is very good at keeping track of different content views, providing exactly the content I need for different environments, whether I have a development QA and production environment, or I have things completely separated and I need to manage exactly what packages are available to different systems. So in order to maintain that, it can be helpful to have something to really transfer satellite into infrastructure as code, and that's the capability that Ansible provides. So specifically around patching, I could use Ansible to help promote and update content views, and then I can also use Ansible to actually perform testing afterwards. So I wanna make sure that once that promotion process is complete, that all of the available packages still work. I don't have any dependency issues or anything like that. And then obviously I can still leverage Ansible to ensure that my activation keys, the content views are set up exactly as I want them. So the entirety of satellite can be infrastructure as code. So for whatever reason I need to redeploy satellite, I have that capability. So Ansible is great at this since I can leverage simple YAML code to make all of this put into place. And then I can also leverage Ansible to do the actual patching of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux servers after I've gone through the process of updating satellite. The beauty of the automation platform is then I can also schedule these pieces. So I've set up in my environment that I do my content view promotion on the first Sunday of every month, and then I'm ready to go for patching when my, the rest of my teams are available. So now I don't have to worry about have the content views been promoted? Is everything ready to go when my patching cycles are ready? Now I know without a doubt that the answer is yes. So think of content views as they exist today. I can have content views or composite content views with different dates. I can have all of this set up to automatically happen based on that collection that exists. So I can have everything set up for my development versus QA versus production life cycles without really needing to manually manage these different aspects. I can also use Ansible to create the initial content views. So again, I can have that entirety defined as infrastructure as code. So this is one way that I could leverage patch automation with satellite. So I can have this scheduled to apply those patches at a certain point, or I can have the individual teams schedule it based on what they've got going on. And I can leverage the tags or host groups inside satellite to do dev versus QA versus production. And obviously satellite is going to be what manages the content versions and, pr and promotion, but because of what we talked about, I can leverage Ansible to do that publishing and promotion. I can then pull all that information into the automation platform, actually run those updates and then be ready to go. So I can go through dev, verify that everything works properly. So I've seen some teams go through a few testing process um, with whatever the application team requires before rolling into that next environment. So I can do this in a very controlled fashion, leveraging exactly what needs to be done across all of my different hosts. So I wanna show exactly what this can look like with, with a few code examples and what a workflow may look like inside the automation platform. So I have already defined my content view inside my satellite environment. As you can see, I've got quite a number of repositories that I have set up. So this is a very easy way to have every single one of your content views defined as well as any filters or anything like that. I can define exactly what environments this may apply to. And then I've got a very simple playbook then that would publish or create this content view for the first time. Great to have that ready to go. And then obviously the important part for individual patching cycles is the ability to publish that new content view version and then also to promote it across the different environments. I've variableized this as much as possible so I can go across all of my different content views that exist and also so I can easily upgrade through the different lifecycle environments to really streamline a lot of this process. Because again, my goal is to be as smooth as possible as I go through this updating capability. So as far as a workflow, what can this look like? So I've got a very simple workflow that exists with the initial publishing of that content or composite content view, promoting into development because by default it starts in library. I've and essentially running a yum update in check mode to verify that everything operates properly. There are no dependency issues or 
any sort of packages that are missing. As long as that works successfully, then I'll promote that into QA. I will test QA, promote once again into production, and then test production. So a very simple way of doing this. I could also have it actually deploy test servers and verify that everything deploys properly. You can really make this as complex as you want. One of the things that I've gone and done is I've got a very basic workflow for my lab environment where I promote into development and I verify that that works properly. And because this is something that I run on a regular basis, I do have this scheduled to run every single month. So this will run in a few days at 8.15 a.m. So I don't even need to be here when this process runs. I can just have this send me a notification that it was successful or that it failed. And then all of my patching will be ready to go for the remainder of this month. So where can I go from there? Fortune Red Hat has put together a three-part blog series that really walks through all of the different pieces of what I walk through. So creating those content views, going through the publishing and promoting process. And they also have a workflow that they leverage in order to actually deploy a few different applications, verify everything is working properly before going into that next lifecycle environment. Another thing you can also start doing is looking through that satellite collection. So currently there are 66 modules that exist, and this really can help you manage the entirety of satellite as infrastructure as code, from activation keys to the content views as we already walked through, to even host, host collections and host groups. So really the entirety of satellite can start going into infrastructure as code, so you can easily manage and deploy your process with a version controlled history of how your environment looks. So I know who's making those changes and I can see exactly how my satellite environment exists today. So thank you for the, taking the time out to learn a little bit more about how Ansible can work in partnership with Red Hat Satellite to ease some of those burdens around managing satellite and also help improve your overall patching cycles. Thank you.